Two of the most incredible works of art are on the brink of vanishing from public view. Titian's great masterpieces, Diana and Acteon and Diana and Callisto, were first put on public display in 1806, but now their aristocratic owner is planning to put them back on the market. The National Galleries of Scotland and London have until the end of the year to try and save them. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it would be a complete disaster if we were to lose these paintings. Now, the fact is, we can save them if we raise £100 million. Now, weird though it may seem, I believe that that's actually a once-in-a-lifetime bargain. The challenge for me is, how do I persuade everyone else? I don't care who painted it or how good it is, it's not worth £100 million. We need to really ask ourselves, are these any good? That sort of... Um, mythological painting is inherently exclusionary because most people don't speak that language and are not familiar with the classics. The question is, is who's going to pay for it? I'm, I'll find a way. You count it out and see how long it, see how long it takes you to count it out. Have I half persuaded you? <laughs> not really. It's still a lot of money. Now, £50 million pounds might seem an awful lot of money for a single painting, but by the standards of the contemporary art market, you have to realise that's actually quite cheap. I mean, three Andy Warhols and a couple of Damien Hirsts is going to set you back £50 million. And these Titians, well, they're no ordinary paintings. Diana and Acteon is based on a Latin poem by Ovid. Acteon is a hunter whose fate is sealed when he stumbles on the goddess Diana, bathing naked by a fountain. The Diana and Acteon myth somewhat falls away for me when I see this picture. It's a universal painting about that universal emotion of love. And he has fallen in love with her, and that gaze between those two figures gives the whole painting an incredible energy. And the whole picture is animated by, by, that, by that sense of, a, of an emotion that turns your heart upside down. Some people find the composition uneasy and awkward. It almost is something that almost makes you feel seasick, the way in which this fountain on which the nymphs are sitting seems to be tilted that way, which gives you the feeling that, that the entire world has been tipped off its axis. But isn't that how the world feels when you fall in love? What a genius Titian is. And that, of course, is why... Every single one of the great artists that have ever lived regarded Titian as, if you like, the godfather of them all. And you look at this painting and you can see every single great painter in it. Velasquez's handling of the nude is in this picture. You've got the whole of Rembrandt. Look at that figure. That could be Susanna, painted by Rembrandt. Here, you've got the whole of the Western European landscape tradition. Titian was the first great artist to truly capture that sense of blue remembered hills, of the way in which distance makes things blue. It's all here. These few square feet of painted cloth, they're actually the DNA of the whole Western European painting tradition. And it's still influencing painters today. Leading figures in contemporary art have come out to support the campaign in droves. I think it would be criminal if we didn't save this painting. It just fills me with, with warmth and my imagination just goes wild. As we stood and looked at it, I mean, what I was doing was, was painting it myself. You, you, you're seeing how he did it. And, but that's all technical stuff. I mean, it just is an amazing masterpiece. This painting is part of my childhood experiences, so it's very difficult for me to imagine this painting not being around for, for us to enjoy in the future. If they raise the first 50 million, the galleries have another four years to continue their appeal to private individuals, various art funds and the government. But in Westminster, the Department of Culture, Media and Sport has a massive cash flow problem. Take the example of the Olympics. The various committees and quangos just running it. Their budget has gone up from £16 million at the outset to, at the latest count, £570 million. Now, that's what I call a waste of money. 
At least if you buy two great pictures by Titian, you've got these great masterpieces. They belong to the nation. They're there, tangible objects to have and hold forever. When you spend money that's coming from the public purse, you also have to assess who you're, you're paying and, and whether that's a good thing. And I think you also have to assess whether people would appreciate you spending that money in that way to that person. In Scotland, the current owner's ancestor, the first Duke of Sutherland, is still vilified for his role in the Highland clearances. He brutally forced thousands of land dwellers out of their homes to make way for more profitable sheep. And that dirty history is still a real stumbling block for many people in Scotland today. Should we just simply shut up because he owns them, he's got the whip hand? Should we say nothing about how his family got its wealth? Should we say nothing about how he's going about this sale? Nothing about the fact that it is in effect, uh, in effect holding us to ransom? I think we need to let go of our history a little bit. Um, and I don't think you can hold the son responsible for the sins of the father. Selling a couple of paintings to a not very wealthy gallery for £100 million it's sort of mixed up in that for me. It's almost sinful. If you take an ethical tooth comb to national collections, they'd be empty. There'd be nothing in there. By focusing on the past, I believe we could cause even more damage to Scotland's future. It's not just a case of losing Diana and Acteon, and this, Diana and Callisto, the second work. Both pictures are just part of the Bridgewater collection of old masters owned by the Duke, which have been on the walls here for over half a century. Now, he said if the Titians are bought for the nation, he'll extend that loan for another 21 years. His pictures are the backbone of the National Gallery of Scotland. To lose them, really would be like ripping the heart out of the collection. However this great crisis is played out in the end, I think it would be a truly appalling, catastrophic loss if Titian's two great mythologies were to go under the hammer. These are works of art which are every bit as great, as rich, as vibrant and humane as the late plays of Shakespeare. But there's a huge difference, because whereas a Shakespeare play can be put on in any theatre in the world at any time, Titian's great dramas are only ever playing on that one stage. Those few square feet of painted canvas, once that's gone, it really is gone forever. A campaigning Andrew Graham Dixon there, but is he right? What do you think, Mark? The, the line in that that really stuck with me is that it's sinful to ask for that kind of money. And at first I thought, that's absolutely right. Of course, then you start thinking, well, the average Hollywood blockbuster movie costs well over $100 million. I mean, actually, that wouldn't pay for, like, you know, a, a Superman movie. So, actually, when you've got two great works of art or a Superman movie, then I think that, that is an argument to be reckoned with. But it still feels like an awful lot of money. Especially at the moment. Yeah, for paintings that I don't like. Um, I don't know. Well... Sorry. I have to say, Andrew will be on the campaign trail for Tisha next week and he's recruited some celebrity clout. He's got photographer Tom Hunter to recreate one of the...